again, series and sequences is part of the pre-calculus second unit na to. Okay, so these are our learning competencies. We illustrate a series. We differentiate series from sequences. We use the sigma notation to represent series. And we apply the use of sigma notation in finding sums. So there is a difference between series and sequences. So later on, we will try to discuss the different... Uh, the comparison between series and sequences. Before that, let's have two questions for your pretest. You may um, type your answers in the chat box. First question, find the next three terms in the sequence, one, three, six, 10, and 15. <laughs> okay, so we have already answers here in our chat box. Let's check whether your answer is correct. Again, we want to find the next three terms in this sequence. We have our answer, 21, 28, and 36. Very good. We have plenty of correct answers in our chat box. Okay, so what was the pattern in this se sequence? As you can see, from one to three, we added two. From three to six, we added three. From six to 10, we added four. From 10 to 15, we added five. So the next, um, the next one should be plus six, and then plus seven, and then plus eight. So you have here 21, 28, and 36. Second question, find the next three terms in this sequence. Negative four, negative eight, negative 16, negative 32, negative 64. Okay, let's check if your answers are correct. So most of the answers in our chat box, we have negative 128, negative 256, and negative 512. So let's check. The correct answer is negative 128, negative 256, and negative 512. All you need to do is you multiply the previous term by two. So since you are already familiar with finding the terms in the sequence, let's now define the sequence, uh, the proper definition of sequence. So a sequence is a range of some function whose domain is either the set of the first n positive integers, that is a finite sequence, or the set of all positive integers or infinite sequence. So this is a function. When we focus on the first n positive integers, so when we talk about positive integers, we start with one, and then followed by two, three, four, five, and so on. Okay, so this is a function, meaning, one meaning the first term in the sequence, two as the second term in the sequence, three as the third term of the sequence, and so on. So let's go back from our previous example. So this is a function of the positive integers. Okay. So meaning if n is equal to one, the x sub n is negative four. If n is equal to two, the x sub n is negative eight. 
if n is equal to 3, then x sub n is negative 16. So the x sub n there refers to the term in the sequence. The 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, it refers to the positioning of the terms in your sequence. Okay, that's the purpose of the first n positive integers or the set of all positive integers. So you have a finite sequence or an infinite sequence. Now, a sequence is also called a progression. So there will be times you may heard arithmetic sequence and arithmetic progression. They are just the same. Geometric sequence, geometric progression is still the same. So again, sequence is also called a progression. So for our lesson, we will just focus on two types of sequences or progression. We have the arithmetic sequence and the geometric sequence or progression. So first, let's define what is an arithmetic sequence. So a sequence is arithmetic if the differences between consecutive terms are the same. So difference, we have to subtract the term from the previous. So we have here a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, up to a sub n. So this is arithmetic. We can get a common difference D if we just simply subtract a sub 2 minus a sub 1, or a sub 3 minus a sub 2, or a sub 4 minus a sub 3. You can get the common difference D. And take note that the common difference D would be constant, meaning the difference between a sub 2 and a sub 1, for example, it is equal to 5, then the difference between a sub 3 and a sub 2 must be equal to 5. Dapat pareha sila tanan ng common difference. So by the term itself, common, they have to have the same difference. Now, for example, in the arithmetic sequence 9, 5, 1, negative 3, and negative 7, the common difference is negative 4. Why is that? 5 minus 9 is negative 4. 1 minus 5 is negative 4. Negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. Negative 7 minus negative 3. Oh, negative 7 minus negative 3 is negative 4. Okay, so you get a common difference, which is negative 4. Also, the sixth term would be negative 11. Okay? How did we find negative 11? All you need to do is to add the common difference from the last term. So we have here the last term is negative 7. So we add the common difference, which is negative 4. So negative 7 plus negative 4 would be negative 11. Now, what do you think would be the seventh term? So the seventh term here, you have negative 11 because it's the sixth term plus the common difference of negative 4. So negative 11 plus negative 4, you get negative 15. Okay, so that is the arithmetic sequence. How about this? So again, let's check. We want to find for the common difference and the next term from the last term being listed. For number one, we have 4, 10, 16, 22, 28. What do you think is the common difference? So the, the common difference would be six, that is, 10 minus 4 is 6, 16 minus 10 is 6, 22 minus 16 is 6, and so on. Next, we have the next term in the sequence would be the last term plus the common difference. So we know that the common difference is 6, so 28 plus 6, you get 34. For number 2, what is the common difference? So as you can see here, the common difference is one half, and the next term from four would be four and a half. Okay, very good. Now, 
To find for the nth term in the arithmetic sequence, we will be using this formula. A sub n is equal to A sub 1 plus the quantity of n minus 1 times d. So A sub n is the nth term in the arithmetic sequence. And you may get the fifth term, the hundredth term, the fiftieth term, and so on. A sub 1 is the first term on the sequence. n is the number or the positioning of the sequence. And D is the common difference. So you list down the formula on your scratch paper so that we can refer to it later. So again, to find for the nth term of the arithmetic sequence, we have the formula A sub 1 plus the quantity of n minus 1 times D. So for example, we want to find the 16th term in the arithmetic sequence, 5, 8, 11, and so on. So the given are the, only, are the first three terms in the sequence only. What we want is to find for the 16th term. So let's identify first the given. So n is equal to 16 because that is what we want to find. And then a sub 1 is equal to 5. That is the first term in the sequence. And what we want to solve is a sub n or a sub 16. So to find for the common difference, we just simply subtract 8 minus 5, you get 3. Or 11 minus 8 is 3. So our formula, a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus the quantity of n minus 1 d. All you need to do is to substitute it or to substitute the given to our formula. So a sub 1 is 5, n is 16, d is 3. So calculating for it, remember PEMDAS, you need to operate first the insides of the parentheses. So 15 minus 1 is, oh, 16 minus 1 is 15, and then Followed by multiplication, 15 times 3, you get 45 plus 5, which is the first term, you get 50. So A sub 16 is 50, or the 16th term in the arithmetic sequence is 50. Next example. In the sequence 4, 7, 10, what term is 301? So what we want is to find for N. Okay, what position in the sequence is 301? So let's identify the given. A sub 1, the first term in the sequence is 4. And A sub n is 301. What we want is to solve for n. So identify first the, the, uh, the common difference. So our common difference, we have 7 minus 4, which is equal to 3. Or 10 minus 7 is also equal to 3. So our formula, a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus the quantity of n minus 1 times d. So again, a sub n is 301, a sub 1 is 4, n is unknown, and our common difference is 3. So calculating for it, so you have 301 minus 4, this is equal to the quantity of n minus 1 times 3. So we have here, kindly check. Kung may typographical error ba ako dali. So, 301 minus 4 is 297. So, we divided, we divided both sides by 3 to eliminate 3 on the right side of the equation, giving you only n minus 1. Okay? Next, we have 297. Kindly check. 297 divided by 3, you get 99. That is equal to n minus 1. So again, what we want is n. So 99 plus 1, you get 100. Meaning 301 is the hundredth term in the sequence. Okay. Let's now proceed with geometric sequence or geometric progression. So a sequence is geometric if the ratios of consecutive terms are the same. So ratio, you divide the second term by the first term, or the third by the second, or the fifth by the fourth term. 
So we have here a common ratio, a sub 2 over a sub 1, a sub 3 over a sub 2, a sub 4 over a sub 3. That's the common ratio. So example, in the geometric sequence, 16, negative 8, 4, and negative 2, find the common ratio and the next term. So how do we find the common ratio? All you need to do is to divide the second by the first term. So negative 8 divided by 16, you get negative 1 half. That's your common ratio. So because you know already the common ratio, how do we find for the next term? To find for the next term, all you need to do is to multiply the common ratio from the last term in the sequence. So the last term in the sequence is negative 2. You multiply it by the common ratio, which is negative 1 half. You get positive 1. Okay, so our fifth term in the geometric sequence is 1. How about the sixth term? If we want to find for the sixth term, what would it be? So the fifth is 1. The common ratio is negative 1 half. So 1 times negative 1 half is negative 1 half. That would be the sixth term. Okay, so yeah, let's proceed. How do we find for the nth term of the geometric sequence? So we have our formula. A sub n is equal to A sub 1 R raised to n minus 1. R again is the common ratio. A sub 1 is the first term in the geometric sequence. So example, find the seventh term in the geometric sequence 2, 10, 50, 250. So first things first, let's identify the given. A sub 1, which is the first term in our sequence, is 2. And our n is equal to 7 because we wanted to find for the seventh term. So to find for the common ratio, all you need to do is to divide 10 by 2. So 10 divided by 2, you get 5. That's the common ratio. Notice also that if you divide 50 divided by 10, you still get 5. 250 divided by 50 is still 5. So substituting these values to our formula, a sub n is equal to a sub 1 r raised to n minus 1. So our a sub 1 is 2, our r is 5 raised to 7 minus 1. So 2 multiplied to 5 raised to 6, you get 31,250. That's the seventh term in your geometric sequence. Okay, very good. So, so far, all the answers in our chat box are correct. Now let's proceed with the factorial notation. So let's just introduce the factorial notation because later on we will try to describe the sequences having factorial notations. Now, some sequences in mathematics involve terms that are defined with special types of product called factorials. So if n is a positive integer, meaning starts with 1. So n factorial is just equal to 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 up to n. So for example, we have 2 factorial that would be 1 times 2. 3 factorial is 1 times, oh, for example, you have here 3 factorial. That would be 1 times 2 times 3. Or if you have 5 factorial, that is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5. Okay, that is how we solve or we use the factorial notation. You can also see your calculators. There is this notation. That's the factorial notation. Okay, now there is a special case of a factorial. That is the zero factorial. So zero factorial is equal to one. Meaning, if you have here 
1 factorial, that is also equal to 0 factorial. Because 1 factorial is 1, 0 factorial is also 1. So they are equal. Okay, so see, here are some values of our n factorial for the first few non-negative integers. So again, 0 factorial is 1, 1 factorial is 1, 2 factorial is 2 times 1, or 1 times 2, that's just the same, so which is equal to 2. 3 factorial is 6, because that is 3 times 2 times 1. 4 factorial is 24, 5 factorial is 120. Okay, you may proceed with six, seven, eight, and so on. Now, example, write the first five terms of the sequence given by the formula a sub n is equal to two raised to n over n factorial. So this time, the formula or the defined sequence is given. That is two raised to n over n factorial. And there is an emphasis that we will need to begin with n equal to zero. We wanted to write the first five terms. So if the first term would be n equal to zero, so you have zero, one, two, three, and four. What, what we want is to solve for a sub zero, a sub two, a sub one, a sub two, a sub three, and a sub four. So substituting only the formula or the value of n, so a sub zero, that is, we start with n equal to zero. So this is equal to two raised to n over n factorial. So our n is zero. So two raised to zero is one, zero factorial is one. So one over one is equal to one. If n is equal to one, what would happen? Substitute ra nato si one. So 2 raised to 1 is 2, 1 factorial is 1, so 2 over 1 is 2. If n is equal to 2, so 2 raised to 2, we get 4. 2 factorial is 2, so that 2 factorial is 1 times 2, so you get 2. 4 divided by 2, we get 2. A sub 3, if n is equal to 3, what would happen? 2 raised to 3, that is 8, so 2 times 2 times 2, you get 8. 3 factorial, so 1 times 2 times 3, you get 6. 8 divided by 6, or 8 over 6 in lowest, <coughs> lowest term is 4 over 6. And lastly, a over 4, if n is equal to 4, so you have 2 raised to 4 over 4 factorial. So 2 raised to 4 is 16. 4 factorial is 24. Reduce 16 over 24 to lowest term, you get 2 thirds. So the first five terms in this sequence is one, two, two, four thirds, and two thirds. Okay, any questions regarding the sequence before we proceed with series? Okay, let's proceed with series. Again, when we talk about sequence, that is just a list of numbers. How, when we talk about series, this is the sum on these terms on that sequence. So many applications involve the sum of the terms of a finite or an infinite sequence. Such a sum is called a series. The sum of the first n terms of the sequence is called the finite series, or the sum of the finite sequence is called the finite series. And the sum, or the partial sum, of the infinite sequence is called an infinite series. So again, sequence is just a list of numbers. Series is the sum of those numbers. So we will denote the series as n s sub n to represent the sum of the first n terms of the sequence. So to find for the first n terms of an arithmetic sequence, 
we have these formulas. So we have two formulas for the arithmetic sequence. S sub n is equal to n over two quantity of a sub one plus a sub n. Another formula for the arithmetic sequence is n over two multiplied to two a sub one plus the quantity of n minus one times d. So again, a sub one is the first term of the sequence. A sub n is the last term or the nth term in the sequence. And d, of course, is the common difference. S sub n is the sum of those terms in the sequence. So what we want is to find for the sum of the first 100 natural numbers. So if we refer to the natural numbers, the starting number would be one. So natural numbers, we have one, two, three, four, and so on. Natural numbers is also known as the positive integers. Again, natural numbers is also known as the positive integers. So if you want to find for the first 100 natural numbers, so that is the sum of 1, 2, 3, 4, up to 100. So to solve for it, all you need to do is to identify the first term, and the last term, we add this two and multiply it by n over two. This is from our formula earlier. So S sub 100 is equal to n over two. We know that our n is 100 because there are 100 terms. A sub one is one because that is the first term or the first natural number. A sub 100 is 100. That's the hundredth natural number so we have here n is 100 over 2 so that is equal to 50 1 plus 100 is 101 50 times 101 is 5050 so if you are asked what is the sum of the first 200 positive integers so what will you do you sub uh, you substitute this n by 200 and this a sub n by 200 and then you compute it using this formula. Another example, find the sum of the first 150 terms of the arithmetic sequence 5, 16, 27, 38, 49 and so on. We cannot use the previous formula because we do not know A sub n. However, we have another formula for the arithmetic or the sum of the arithmetic sequence. So here, our A sub one is equal to five and our common difference is 11. So that is 16 minus five is 11. 27 minus 16 is 11. 38 minus 27 is 11. So using our equation from earlier, we have here S sub 150 is equal to 150 over two. This is our N. So N over two, quantity of two, times five, what is five? That is our A sub one. And then plus N minus one multiplied by D. So recall, we have here S sub N, the formula N over two. This is two times A sub one plus the quantity of N minus one times D. So we have here again, our N is 150, our A sub one is five, our common difference is 11. Substituting those numbers to our equation. So we have here 150 minus one is 149 times 11, you get 1,639. Two times five is 10. So 10, plus 1,639, multiply it by 75, you get 
Now let's proceed with the applications of geometric sequence and geometric uh, geometric sequence and arithmetic sequence or series. We have here an auditorium has 20 rows of seats. There are 20 seats in the first row, 21 seats in the second row, 22 seats in the third row, and so on. How many seats are there in all 20 rows? So here, you cannot just simply count all the chairs in this auditorium. We can simply use our formula. So looking at this, we have 20 rows. And there are 20 seats. So meaning A sub 1 is 20, A sub 2 is 21, A sub 3 is 22, and so on. So our N is 20 because again, there are 20 rows. So using our formula A sub N or S sub 20, that's the sum of all shares in the 20 rows. We have N over 2. Quantity of 2 times A sub 1 plus the quantity of N minus 1 times D. We know the common difference is 1 because the first row contains 20 seats. The second row contains 21 seats. So there is one share as a common difference from the first and the second row. So our N, 20 rows, so 20 over 20. 20 over 2 multiplied by 22 times 20. This 20 is the first term plus 20 minus 1. So you get 19 multiplied by 1. So still 19. So 2 times 20, you get 40. So 40 plus 19, you get 59. 59 multiplied by 10, you get 590. So there are 590 seats in the auditorium. Next example, the sum of the first 15 terms of an arithmetic progression is 270. Find the first term and the common difference if the 15th term is 39. So what we want is to solve for the first term and the common difference. So we know that S sub 15 is 270. A sub 15 is 39. That's the 15th term. And obviously, our N is 15. So to solve for our A sub 1, we use this formula. Why do we have to use this formula? It's because we know the sum, which is 270, and we know A sub 15, which is 39. The only unknown in this equation is A sub 1, which is what we want to find. So substituting everything in our formula, S sub N is 270. This is equal to 1 half times the quantity of A sub 1 plus 39. That's our A sub 15 or the 15th term in the progression. Next, multiplying both sides by 2 so that 1 half is cancelled out here. So 270 times 2, this is equal to A sub 1 plus 39. So 270 times 2, you get 540 minus 39 so that we can isolate A sub 1 here. So 540 minus 39, you get 501. So 501 is the first term in the arithmetic progression. Next, we wanted to find for the common difference. So we use this formula. This was the formula for the arithmetic sequence earlier. So A sub N is equal to A sub 1 plus the quantity of N minus 1 times D. We know A sub N, that is 39. A sub 1, we already solved it, it's 501. N is equal to 15. So the only unknown is the common difference D, which is what we want to find. So substituting it, we have 39 is equal to 501 plus the quantity of 15 minus 1 times D. 
So 15 minus 1 is 14. So we need to isolate 501. So we added negative 501 to both sides of the equation. You get 39 minus 501 is equal to 14D. We subtract this two, we get negative 462. This is equal to 14D. And then dividing both sides by 14, we can cancel out 14 here. So what is left is D. So negative 462 divided by 14, you get negative 33 as the common difference. Okay, any questions regarding this example? So I guess there is none. Let's proceed with the sum of the first n terms of a geometric sequence or geometric progression. So earlier we discussed the sum of the first terms or first n terms of the arithmetic progression. This time we'll proceed with the geometric progression. So we have here our formula, S sub n is equal to A sub one, quantity of r raised to n minus one over r minus one. So example, find the sum of the first six terms of the geometric progression, two, six, 18, and so on. So we want to find for the sum of the first six terms. So our first term is two, with a common ratio of three. So six divided by two is three. Now using our equation earlier, we know that a sub one is two and our r is equal to three. So s sub six, because that's the first six terms in the progression. So this is equal to two quantity of three, that's our r, raised to uh, r raised to n, which is six minus one all over r minus one. So three raised to six, okay? Take, um, try to look at the denominator. The denominator is three minus one, which is also equal to two. So if this is two, we can cancel out the two also in the numerator. So what is left is three raised to six minus one. So three raised to six is 729 minus one, you get 728. So let's now proceed with the sigma notation. To represent a sum or a series, it can be represented by the sigma notation. The sigma notation is the summation notation. So the sum of the first n terms of a sequence is represented by the summation of a sub i, where i is from one to n. So that is equal to a sub one plus a sub two plus a sub three up to a sub n, where i is the index of summation and n is the upper limit of the summation. And one is a lower limit of that summation. So our index started with one, ended with n. Okay. So that is how we represent the summation notation. However, our index, it depends on how you define it. It can start with two, three, zero, and many more. Now, example. Consider the set of values three, five, seven, and four. To write the sum of these values in compact form, we designate the values as x sub one, x sub two, and so on. So we consider three as our x sub one, five is our x sub two, seven is our x sub three, and four is our x sub four. So we have here the summation of x sub i, where i is from one to four. So that would be x sub one plus x sub two plus x sub three plus x sub four. 
Take note, our index started with 1. So we start with x sub 1. So adding all those values, you get 19. 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 4, you get 19. Also, we have here the summation of x sub i squared, where i is from 1 to 4. So that is x sub 1 squared plus x sub 2 squared plus x sub 3 squared plus x sub 4 squared. So we square x sub 1. Our x sub 1 is 3. So 3 squared plus 5 squared plus 7 squared plus 4 squared. We get 99. On the third example, this is the square of the summation of x sub i. So here, as you can see, um, we sum up, we add up all the x sub i's. So we have 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 4, which is equal to 19. All raise the power of 2, so you get 361. Based on this example, we can actually um, conclude that the summation of x sub i squared, where i is from 1 to n, is not equal to the square of the summation. So that is the summation of x sub i, i is from 1 to n, all raised to the power of 2. What is the difference between these two values? Take note, the one being squared here are the x sub i. So each term must be raised to the power of 2. However, in this notation, we have to add up all the x sub i's first before squaring it, before raising it to 2. You see the difference? Okay, so there is a big difference between these two numbers. Now, for example, what I want is to find for the summation of x sub i, i starts with 2 to 3. So here, that would be x sub 2 plus x sub 3 only. Again, as I mentioned earlier, it depends on the starting point and the end point on your um, index of summ summation. So our index of summation started with 2, ended with 3. So here, our i is 2, so substitute na to, see 2 to the i here, so that would be x sub 2, and then you have here x sub 3. So what would be the value? Our x sub 2, we defined it as 5. Our x sub 3, defined it as 7. So 5 plus 7, you get 12. Okay, so for example, we have a true or false question. You identify whether this statement is true or false. The sum of the square is equal to the square of the sum. Let me repeat. The sum of the square is equal to the square of the sum. True or false? Okay, this statement is false. What do I mean by the sum of the squares? This is the sum of the squares. Number two is the sum of the squares. Why? We added all the squares of x sub i's. However, the square of the sum is this one. So that's the square of this summation, which is what is inside the parenthesis. So that is obviously false. Now we have here a few properties of sum. Number one, the summation of C, where I is from one to N, is equal to C times N, where C is a constant. For example, the summation of um, 10, where I is from one to five, what would that be? If we simply write it down one by one, by definition only, that would be 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10. Why? We have 1 to 5, meaning there are 5 terms. And because this is a constant, we simply add 10 5 times. So we have um, 10 here added 5 times, so which is equal to 50. By using this property of sum, 
we can also use this property so that is c times n our c which is our constant 10 multiply it by n which is the last index of summation so which is 5 so we have 50 Number two, the summation of C times A sub one as I, where I is from one to N. So all the constants, pwede na to igawa. So that would be C times the summation of A sub I. So for example, we have the summation of two X sub I, where I is from one to two. So that would be 2 times x sub 1 plus 2 times x sub 2. That one. So our x sub 1 earlier, what was that number again? So this would be 2 times, was that 3? Let me recall the numbers. So we have 3 and 5. Okay, so this would be 2 times 3 plus 2 times 5. So 2 times 3, you get 6. 2 times 5 is 10, so you get 16. However, if we use the property, this property number 2, we can simply rewrite it as the summation of 2x sub i, where i is from 1 to 2, so that would be 2 times the summation of x sub i, i is from 1 to 2. So that would be 2 times x sub 1 plus x sub 2. So that is 2 times 3 plus 5. So 3 plus 5, you get 8. So 2 times 8 is 16. So they are just the same. Number three, we have the summation of a sub one plus uh, a sub i plus b i, where i is from one to n. So we can separate our summations. So this would be the sum of a sub i plus the sum of b sub i. So we'll have more examples on the next slide. So as you can see here, the summation of 10 where i is from 1 to 3. So from our first property, that would be the constant multiplied to the last term or last index in your summation. So 3 times 10, you get 30. Here, the summation of 2i where i is from 1 to 3. So all the constant pwede na to igawas. So that would be 2 times the summation of i, i is from 1 to 3. So as you can see, i na lang siya, dili siya x sub i. So substitute i from 1 to 3. So 1, 2, and 3. So 1 plus 2 plus 3. So 1 plus 2 is 3 plus 3, you get 6. So we have here 2 times 6, you get 12. And if you have this, the summation of the quantity 10 plus 2i, where i is from 1 to n. So by property number 3, we can separate these two. This would now be the summation of 10 plus the summation of 2i. From first example, we know that the summation of 10 is 30. From the second example, we know that the summation of 2i is 12. So 30 plus 12 is equal to 42. Now, how do we write this in another way? Okay, by using the definition. If we want to use the definition, this can be written as 10, plus 10, plus 10, which is obviously equal to 30. This one, if we want to write this in the definition, using the definition form, that would be 2 times 1 plus 2 times 2 plus 
2 times 3. That would be 2i. So our i is 1, 2, and this is 3. Ayan, 3. Which is still the same value, which is equal to 12. This one, how do we write this? Using the definition. That would be 10 plus 2 times 1. Plus 10 plus 2 times 2. Plus 10 plus 2 times 3. That's the other way of writing this. Okay? And this is equal to 42. So in our module, you can just simply um, write it using the properties of sums or you use the definition whichever is comfortable for you okay let's have another example let x sub 1 be equal to 5 x sub 2 before x sub 3 is 8 x sub 4 is 6 also, y sub 1 is 1, y sub 2 is negative 1, y sub 3 is 2, and y sub 4 is 3. Let's calculate letter A, which is the summation of x sub i, y sub i, where i is from 1 to 4. And letter B, the summation of x sub i squared plus y sub i squared where i is from 1 to 4. So I'll give you five minutes to answer this. Is it enough? Three to five minutes to answer this problem. Sige, let's proceed. So, so far, you have different answers. Let's check who among you got the correct one. So for letter A, we take note that this is a product. So meaning we cannot separate this two because we do not have a property of the separation of the sums of the product. Meaning the sum of the product is not equal to the product of the sums. Okay, so for letter A, we have here the summation of x sub i, y sub i. So that would be x sub 1, y sub 1, plus x sub 2, y sub 2, plus x sub 3, y sub 3, plus x sub 4, y sub 4. So substitute our values. Our x sub 1 is 5. Our y sub 1 is 1. Our x sub 2 is 4. Our y sub 2 is negative 1. Our x sub 3 is 8. Our y sub 3 is 2. X sub 4 is 6. And lastly, y sub 4 is 3. So multiplying these terms, 5 times 1 is 5. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. And so on. So just add up all those products, you get 35. For letter B, is it 35 or my calculation is wrong? Kindly check. So okay, sige. So for letter B, the summation of x sub i squared plus y sub i squared, i is from one to four. So from property number three earlier, we can separate this two because this is a sum. So the summation of x sub i squared plus the summation of y sub i squared. So here we add up all the squares of x sub i and he, this part we add up all the squares of y sub i. So x sub one squared, x sub two squared, x sub three squared, x sub four squared. This one, y sub 1 squared plus y sub 2 squared plus y sub 3 squared plus y sub 4 squared. So the summation of x sub i squared would be 141. And the summation of y sub i squared is 15. So we add this two, we get 156.
Okay, sige. So, I guess that uh, ends our lesson for today. Do you have any questions regarding the topic?